What's happening, Olympiacos fans? This is Gate 7 International, by the fans, for the fans. What a fantastic night. It's a night we've all been waiting for. Olympiacos' first win in a European group stage. It's been more than 11 games, I think, that we haven't won in the group stages. 2-1 victory tonight against West Ham United Football Club. It's against another English club that falls to the Greek hammer at Karaiskakis. I've got Marshall with me tonight. And actually, wait for it. It is really is a special night tonight. We, we won in the basketball as well, by the way, against FS. And look who's back. Look who's Hello. back. Hello. Hey there, everyone. Let the good times roll. What's up? Let the good man? time rolls, guys. I, I couldn't miss it. I'm still in the office, so I can only stay for five to ten minutes and Marshall is laughing at me in my suit. I can tell already that fraud. Um, yeah, guys, what an awesome night, right? I, I wrote in the comments, it's like Sunday we were talking about that loser mentality we had in Europe. And tonight was classic Olympiacos. Like David Moyes was on the touchline. It made me think it was 2014, 2015. And Joel Campbell was running down the pitch. So just an awesome night, just felt like a blast from the past you know like real old school olibacos home performance against a big team a team we weren't expected to be um just an awesome night the team, you didn't, the team you didn't expect us to be not at all i picked us to lose 3-1 like an idiot um after what happened on sunday i didn't know where the team's head was at i didn't know the first half we didn't play really good but he came out and he started that 4-3-3 like, finally, he's just like, it clicked. He was like, Fortunis doesn't track back. We need three midfielders, Alexandropoulos and Kamara, both as eights with Esse playing the six. It's like, my God, we were just, it, it, it was like what we'd all been waiting for. And Jose was incredible tonight, just incredible. Alexandropoulos and Kamara, I think, played best in a three-man midfield like that. And they, they played awesome. Really great night. Rodine Ortega showed up much better than he was against Panathinaikos, in my opinion. Looks really good. Uh, and Fortunis Magic, he, he did it in a big game in Europe, you know. It's been a little while, but really great night. Really what, great do you night. what do you have to say about that, Marshall? Fortunis doing it in Europe. Well, I have to say I agree 100% with Ambrose because uh, a lot of uh, bucks have been tickled tonight. I would say like Fortuny scoring an important goal, uh, the midfielder, the 4-3-3, uh, Poroso as a center back, uh, the way we did not consider that 2-2 because it was like it was smelling that 2-2 at the end of it. And uh, yeah, it, it's a really old school victory as Lambro said because the, the atmosphere as, at Kariskakis was probably one of the best scenes probably the beginning of Martin's era, the, 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 the year in Champions League, maybe. And it was like, it felt like a Champions League night tonight. Like the performance of the team, the fans, etc. And hopefully it will be a, a, a turning point. Like not the season. The season is not bad, but it has to be a turning point, at least in Europe for us. Yeah. On it it, can I say real quick? Yeah, it, it was Poroso, man. What was he may be, whatever he may be, but tonight he was incredible. What a performance! Like, he hasn't played a full 90 minutes all season, and he was battling. He part he put in his pocket that Danny Ings, and then he was pissing off Mikel Antonio so bad, who fouled him really bad in the, the back. He was absolutely incredible tonight, it has to be said as well. So if the season turns around, it's because we need a defender badly and he may be the defender that can fill a gap for at least until January. I, I don't know. I want to see more from him. We've only seen 90 minutes, but the 90 minutes we just saw was pretty pretty damn good. Much better than Doi. And you can see at the fundamentals, he's actually a defender. He's a, he's a defender. He's a defender. You see how he defends and how he moves his body, how he gets up for headers. He knows he's been playing this position for a long time. So... That was one another one of my big takes takeaways. It was great seeing him out on the pitch. He looks really good. Can we just um, talk about the atmosphere and just uh, like because this was a 
big point coming into today's game. We did a lot of interviews, had a lot of chats with West Ham fans over the last few days and a lot of focus was on what the atmosphere was going to be like, you know, people legit scared going to the stadium because there was the, the game across town as well. Uh, Banathanag was playing Wren. But yeah, I think you said it, Marshall. It felt like a Champions League atmosphere tonight in the stadium. And it was absolutely beautiful to see. And, you know, we've we've even changed our background today uh, and put up an image from, from today's today's game, the TIFO with this is Bireas across the middle of the stadium. And then, you know, tonight you're dying in hell on the left-hand side uh, in front of gate seven. And it really does make you wonder, like, why just, we don't, I don't expect a TIFO in every game, but why can't they just behave like that in every game? Why does it have to take something bad or a threat that UEFA is going to ban our stadium if there are lasers, if there's any flares or whatever it is. Why does it always have to be on the back of a threat that we that we behave? It, it We showed tonight that we can do it. Gate 7 put out an announcement, you know, saying, please don't do this, don't do that. It's like, wh why is any, any night different? Yes, there are more special games, but every football game is a celebration. And we, we proved it tonight in the most perfect way. I think everyone everyone's talking about the atmosphere tonight for the good yeah. reason, not the bad reason. Because the atmosphere, the, the point tonight was to help the team and not to intimidate the, the other team. Like I, I, I know it comes together, but this kind of, this, of atmosphere will, will most likely help the team rather than to... Uh, scare the the West Ham players for example or the Panathinaikos players or stuff like that and when you help the team it it can give give the team the 10 percent needed to overperform maybe and yeah we were we were craving for that since COVID maybe if not yeah. before the the Panathinaikos game last season course I was at last season was pretty awesome too but the, like you can count on your hands since COVID how many amazing atmospheres we've had it's like that game against Panathinaikos maybe this Sunday's game against Panathinaikos tonight's game but like I look back at last season's Europa League and you look at the stadium tonight was sold out like the West Ham fans were next to our fans that I don't know in a European game has not happened since COVID. I was thinking of the Atalanta game I was at where they had still restrictions and it was like, they were miles away from the rest of us. It was like shoulder to shoulder um, occupation, sold out crowd and just, like you said, I, I don't even notice if you saw at one point they had the, the little white and the red as you see on our background yeah. and they would sing a chant and the white would go up and then it's like I hadn't yeah. even seen that ever before uh, in, in our stadium. They choreographed that as well. It was just great stadium. Like the whole, and you could see like people in the middle were jumping and dancing as well. It was just like, you saw kids in the stadium as well. Like just great atmosphere. That's like, that is what it's all about. That's, you know, just awesome. So awesome. It was lovely. And it was something that I, I mentioned on the podcast that I joined West Ham fans. I said, it's like, it is normally behind the goal, the fans that set the tempo in terms of the atmosphere in the stadium. And most of the time when the stadium's a bit quiet, you know, they'll be singing and trying to encourage the team, push them on. But it's Karaiskaki for me becomes that fortress when the team's playing well and they get the whole stadium behind them. It, yeah, it's one thing, gate seven, but... You felt it like after the first goal, the stadium, like everybody in there that was remotely red and white, they smell blood. So, like, all right, get in there, you know, and you felt it like after one nil, we broke forward a couple of times and you felt like, you know, we can get another one quickly here and make it two nil. And this is going to be a really hard night for them. Um, and we were in a groove. We were finding rhythm. And that's when Gadai Skaggy at his best when the whole stadium, everybody gets behind the team, it becomes that intimidating fortress. And intimidating doesn't necessarily mean bad. Yeah. 
intimidating in the sense that, you know, if you're an opposition player and you're playing in that atmosphere, you, you your, your legs kind of feel a bit shaky or, I don't know. Uh, for me, it was always a bit, bit of a question mark for this West Ham team coming into that. And of course, the team had to perform and, and they did, like they had to tonight. It was sort of a do or, or die match. And we performed on both sides of the pitch, like uh, offensively, defensively, in transition. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of bored of saying this since the beginning of the season, but it still is a new team. And, you know, maybe, you know, this, this is a contributing factor to building the team. I, I still don't think like, you know, we're not ready. Yeah, this isn't a ready team. It's the first time we've seen the team play 4-3-3. I don't think like I wasn't expecting it. Were any of you expecting a four three three tonight? No. And the, the question is also if um if Freire or if Doy were fit, would he have played a four three three tonight? Is a yeah. I'm 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 a bit I, I don't I know about that. I'm not sure. I don't even want to think about Doy or Freire now. I'm like they're so shit. I like at least Doy is at, at central defense. Ferreira is like a 29 year old. Everyone knows he's shit. But like, Doy is not a central defender for Olympiacos. <clears throat> maybe for Atromitos, but like, maybe he's a good six. I don't know. Maybe we should see him there. I don't even want to think about Doy playing central defense again for Olympiacos, to be honest. Like, and, and Marcial, we were there in the stadium and we were talking about it against who was it? Like, not Yonikos. Who did we see play? Kifisia? Was that it? Yeah, no, it was Lamia. Lamia. And the way you just, you watch Retzos defend versus the way you watch Doi defend and his movement and his positioning. And it's just like he, he holds on. He goes too tight. He does this all the time. He goes too tight. He holds players. They spin him so easily. It's just, and, and you saw Peroso tonight. Like the, the athleticism too. He got up. It, it was like a header where the ball was just like coming down. He jumped so high and he whipped, he whipped his head on it and hit it right into the keeper. Do you remember this moment? I don't know. He he had like a header. Yeah, I, I remember so, that. And he went straight. It went straight into the goalkeeper. But it was like he he got so high and got so much power on this header where there was no momentum on it. And I thought to myself, "Wow, just wow, wow." I. <laughs> And it's weird because Peroza, we saw for like 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and everyone was was of the opinion, mm, I don't know about this shaky. guy. Bit shaky. Yeah. And then tonight. The, the thing is, I, the, the, that will rise me the most about Endoy is that I don't think he can cope uh, as he should while he sees, for example, someone like Peroza doing a performance like that in Europe. And at uh, a guy would say probably, okay, I have to work more to change the way I play, to correct some stuff. But Hendoy, he has that hover patient uh, that shows that he's not really ready for competition. And I might be wrong, but it's not the guy that will improve that much with competition. Because if we remember that season, he came to the team because uh, we had we had no team, so he wasn't in a competition with anyone because. The team went, was yet to be made uh, in October, November. But since he had that competition, it, it, it did not improve. Uh, and it's the opposite, I would say, because he kind of not degraded, but it's, a, is at the same level and is not improving on the attitude. He's not improving on the easy falls he makes on the pitch, the, the tackles, the way he defends. And... I'm curious to see how Martinez will decide from now on because uh, we know at Olympiacos the, the injuries sometimes at the, uh, it's what we need to have some players in and out of the lineup. So maybe that 4-3-3 will be reused. I hope so because the midfield was very interesting. And Porroso, I would say, he has to play in Crete next Monday. Like you, you don't change a, a center back pairs. We we did change too much last season, and we paid for that. Yeah. 
Well, um, we have somebody else that's going to be joining us in a moment. Before I bring that person in, don't forget to like, hit that like button below. It really helps to reach out to other Olympiacos fans around the world that haven't discovered us yet. Subscribe, hit the bell, make sure you get all the latest content at Gate 7 International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. And on that note, I'm going to bring in our other co-host, Aris Bulubasis. What's up, Ari? Just finished work? Yep. I'm about to head out of here. Only have a few minutes, but I'm fucking elated. I'm so happy. Uh, I was expecting a loss today. I was. I told the guys on the West Ham network I was I was expecting 2-1 loss. And I almost want to erupt in song. I do. I'm not a singing guy, but I, I do. Perozo, Perozo, I love you, Perozo. You're now my new CB. In the theme of Annie, I love him. I love him. Fantastic. I'm so happy for the guy. He uh, had a, a really took the opportunity that I expected somebody like Doy would take. I expected him to do what Porozo did at some point. So really happy uh, to see that. I'm happy with everybody's performance. I love I love seeing the 4-3-3 in the midfield. Um, I thought, you know, when we first did the the report on Diego Martinez, as a coach, we expected him to be very flexible with these types of games, change position, change tactics, depending on the team. But he actually was really rigid since coming in, sticking to some of the same things, the same formation over and over. Today, he finally decided to do it. He finally decided to change, make the adjustment. And look what we saw today. It's It was brilliant. I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm on cloud nine, excited, been wearing my colors today at work. I love it. I'm happy. It's funny, actually, because in the press conference, he was asked about that, about changing to the 4-3-3. And he commented that anybody that's followed my career knows that I'm quite a flexible manager and that, I've, that I'm open to playing different types of formations. So you're right, though. Like I said it on a, a channel I was on the other day as well. He's been he's been quite stubborn in keeping to certain principles and not really changing it up a lot. And none of us were expecting the change in formation. Uh, we were just saying, Ari, it was forced upon him almost because, yeah. because he only had Perozo. Perozo hadn't played 90 minutes. This is the biggest game of the season. And, you know, that extra protection, I think it also contributed to a better balance between the midfield and the defence. One more thing. Have we ever had all five of us on the show at one at one time? It's been a has long time. Happened? If it well, has, it's happened a long time ago. Well, it's, it's about to happen now. <laughs> it's Avengers. Hey! Hey, <laughs> you guys! So, you guys, I've been at rings of Gate 7 International. I went to um I went out to watch this game. It was nothing nothing serious. What did I miss? <laughs> anything big? Oh, anything big happened today? Oh, Are we talking tell anything us, big today? Tell us from the stadium how good did Peroza look? Like how Well, I gotta say, I mean was it the first time we see Poroza and Rezzos uh, start together? Poroza's yeah. first start, Costa. Yeah, first start, period. <laughs> it was the first start, yeah, in general. I had that idea. So I did have this feeling thing to myself. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, I feel like this team, Olibiakos, is a team that's still, it's still finding its footing. And I said that to Will Pugh the other day of, from We Are West Ham, that I feel like it's only a time until this team clicks. And it's going to happen. I told him it's going to happen at some point this season. I don't know when. Uh, but it is going to happen. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And I did ask him, you know, if that happens against you guys at West Ham, you guys are going to struggle with us. Because Costas made it such an amazing uh, point the other day that uh, a, a, an objective fan watching Olympiacos this season, watching Olympiacos conceding a goal, they wouldn't really go like, bravo, what a goal, what a goal, mate. Like, look at the way they opened them up. That ball, look, that movement from the striker, what a, what a hit, what a take. An objective fan would think to themselves, my God, that is, that is shambolic defending. What are they doing? What, what is he thinking over there? Whereas today, it kind of felt like we clicked. We finally clicked. 
Everyone that was supposed to be there was there today. Fantastic performance by Jackson Porozo. Fantastic chemistry with Panos Retsos. Yes, David Moyes was resting key players, which proved to be wrong. But then again, they were playing against one of the most informed Premier League teams that didn't lose a single game in Europe in their, in their last 17 outings. And they made it look easy as well. Absolutely fantastic performance by Santiago Eze, which I told you guys he was missing. He was such an evident, such an obvious absence. Olympiacos were just so open at the back without Eze. But now that we had him, it was just the bridge between defense and midfield was so smooth. Costas Fortuna is a performance of a lifetime. Daniel Podense did really well, but left a lot um, in terms of the final uh, product. He should have done more in the final product. El Kabi as well, in my opinion. Camara, finally back to it. A performance that showed him to be back to his best. Rodine, sensational. But I have to say, guys, I feel like there's going to be ups and downs. That's what I was trying to explain the other day, the other week. There's ups and downs within a team's performances. And now we saw a really big up at Olympiacos. But my God, Porozo and Rezzos, that needs to make, that needs to persist. We need to see that at Ofi. We really need to see that at Ofi. Because this team, in my opinion, against West Ham, they clicked. And that's what we were waiting for. That's what happened tonight. They clicked. Ofi and can I... be touched by this divinity next. How about that? You guys like this? Yes. Yes. I love the graphic. Love it. That was his favorite graphic ever. But... I want to like. Here's how, to you, like, lads. I want to. I want to ask you guys: When Paqueta scored, were any of you guys having like PTSD the last season, ninety minute plus yes. goal? Yes, I thought. Like, I, I thought was, it like, was shaking. only a matter of time. I was like, oh my god! I was like, oh my god! It's like, happening. I, so, I thought it was so happening. Much, I have so much PTSD from last season. Like, literally, we could be up like three 0 in the eighty fifth minute, and I, and I'm just like, we're gonna concede twenty goals and lose it. Like, well, not twenty goals. Good. I I expected. I expected a penalty. <laughs> I, I remember so. one point. I remember one point where Bowen was um, brought down after a defender got the ball first, and was obviously got the ball. I could see it from up there, but I was afraid, like you know, it's going to be a penalty, isn't it? We're gonna we're gonna give away a penalty. That's what I was thinking. It's not just a last season thing, Labro. That's an Olympiacos thing. Period. I know. It's you're just like, like you tune it up and then they score in the 87th <laughs> minute. And then I literally just like picked up the pillar and smashed it on the table in front of because me. And my wife's like, what chill a out. Stupid like, it's just goal the pillar, it's not continue. the TV, it's not the remote. And then they're just standing up and pacing up and down the yeah. room for the next 15 minutes, just thinking, just <laughs> blow the fucking whistle, blow the fucking whistle at the end. The goal standing. we conceded was just like so stupid and like. But was it? Yeah. What, what was Keeney supposed to do? Yeah. I told send uh, it out uh, for a corner or something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, and I, I, talked, and I talked on the phone and I told him, yeah. like, mate, he had he had time, not yet. Like, the, the ball was in the air, he had no one around him. You could literally even wait for the ball, yeah, to, to drop and then vo just like half volley it out into the like rugby kick it into touch. But then he's just literally gone boink, right? Maybe, in, maybe right I need to rewatch it, and then Paqueta's gone. Boom! Like great goal. That was a that was a sensational finish though from Paqueta. Let's let's admit that that was that was not Vajanidis. That was not uh, the Freiburg oh. guys. That was a sensational volley. Yeah, but he's a world class player. Oh, he's not world not class. Hey, like, Remse, calm down. Malaka, he no. plays for the Brazilian. O Paqueta, O Paqueta, world class. Yeah, yeah man, he's Paqueta good. Uh, world class, O Paqueta. <laughs> Paqueta is world class. It was a world class finish. <laughs> <laughs> I need to drink more beer for this. I need to drink Wasn't, a lot more beer yes, for yes, this. Yes. Wasn't Paqueta linked to Man City this summer? And they said no. He was, was going to go to Man City. Yeah. He was going to go to Man City, but uh, he was done by those betting allegations uh, that he was uh, doing illegal betting stuff. Allegations. Mm -hmm. But that's literally the only reason it didn't happen. Got it. Anyway. He's better, Adi, than, a, he's better than skateboarder. Skateboard. Adi, guys, I, I'm going to head out. And Therefore, he's world class. But I, I just want to say, like, what an awesome, awesome. It felt, did you guys feel like we rolled the year back? Like, it's not even yeah. been that long, but like pre-COVID, like it's been four years, it feels like, since a packed Karizkaki big game against a big team and we won. I'm trying to think yeah. back. What was it? Because at Arsenal at home, also, we, we dropped. It's been like 2019. 
Mate, the last someone? the last game we won at home in the group stage was against uh, Red Star, and that was with a 90, 90th minute penalty. Yeah. We yeah. worked Fener as well. We beat Fener Barté as well. But that was away. That was away. Oh, no, 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 that, was, that at was at home. That was at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but that wasn't a sold out. You know, I'm I, I'm trying to say like we were underdog, like whatever. It, yeah, no. I, it, those it right. those were games. Those were games that we should have won, though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, we weren't. That wasn't like special. Like this, we weren't. Yeah. No one was expecting a win. Like we were all expecting a loss, except for maybe Costa. No, 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 not not maybe Costa. Not maybe. Costa. <laughs> Let me correct you. Uh, <laughs> no, Costa called it, and Costa, I salute you. I salute I you. I said three one. Oh, fantastic. I, I, one. I, I didn't call it I two will, one. I think I'll leave saying this. We, I think, you guys can continue. Alexandropoulos and Kamara, their best position is in a three-man midfield with a six like in between them and then they can just like Do it was a bit like the Fenerbahce away with Agi Bukamara and Mari Kamara and they were just like free roaming boom 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 anyway love tonight I think we need another eight now and this is our formation going into the big game derbies Fortunis can create things by himself but he cannot track back and we can't keep two midfielders on the field when he's on the field in big games that's my opinion Good night, everyone. What an awesome night. Before also, you leave, before before you leave. Uh, and one last thing. Ramon Deep Dive. What, okay, I'll give Ramon Deep Dive. And another thing, Costas Papa Nicolau was awesome for the basketball team tonight. Like, great win in Seth. Daniel Podente. Shout out Daniel Podente, who showed up in the crowd, too. Awesome game. Ramon Deep Dive, here it comes. With the suit. Wear the suit when you do it. Not good. It's not good for Rafa. <laughs> He's not coming back. He's never coming back. He's never coming back. Literally, never. I'd rather have Keeney play at left back for the rest of my life. Anyway, on that note, I'll talk to you guys another time. Ciao, ciao. Enjoy. See you, Labro. Bye, Labro. Costa, enjoy your beer. I am trying, Bye. man. I'm trying. Bye beer bye. tastes really sweet today. I gotta say, guys, one one more thing. I I have to say this. Remember when we lost to Freiburg? That I said football, in a way, is a game of narratives. Because when we lost to Freiburg, it didn't really suck that we lost to Freiburg. It sucked that everybody else won, and they beat some really good opponents, with the exception of Pau, who beat Helsinki. Tonight, we beat West Ham, one of the most informed Premier League teams who didn't lose for 17 outings in Europe. Panathinaikos lost to Ren. Ike lost to Marseille. Pauk, I'm very glad they won. They beat Aberdeen. Sensational comeback with Aberdeen. But this is what I did mention that, that if we beat West Ham, it is a game of narratives. It is... This is why it's important not to lose our nerve so easily when after 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 after, after a tiny little misslip, because this is what it is at the end of the day. It's a game of narratives. Like Panathinaikos and I have nothing to say tonight. Tonight is all Olympiacos and a historic win at that as well. Fifth team that lose, fifth Premier League team that loses to the Kareskaki. Where where's that graphic? I need to find that graphic of like that three headed dragon that everybody was using against us in the first one was like, oh, Greek teams in Europe. And then Olympiacos was like the dilapidated head. I'm going to find that, except we're on the other side. And I'm going to put all the other teams on the right. F them. Let's do that. Let's do that. Absolutely. Do I, have that. To find that. Mar- I don't know what that graphic's called. I got to find it. It's a meme. I'll find it. Don't worry. Mar- go Martial. I want to ask Martial because I think this is the first time uh, the first time he witnesses Olympiacos beating a Premier League team. How did that feel for you? Well, it's uh, coming back to the place the club belongs, I would say, because uh, beating an English team that is not top five in English, even if West Ham is an informed team, it's what Olympiacos used to do and should should do. And we did not do it with French teams uh, last season uh, against Nantes, for example. And it's I'm not saying it's normal for Olympiacos to beat West Ham because the football now is very different and West Ham like on his on one player can spend more than Olympiacos during two or three summers but the quality of the club in general is not uh, that different and it's what we used to see Olympiacos doing is what we is what we do we did tonight and 
winning in Europe is uh, I I almost forgot what is what is it like to be in the October September with a European win you go to sleep with a happy face and it's not like qualifiers because it's very different and now we we have a a very strong uh, opportunity to secure that third, third place which is more interesting for me than the second place um yeah, I'm curious to see this team if we go to conference league but we have time to think about that but it's a competition in which we we can have more magic nights I want to ask the panel and I want to ask the comment section as well. Was this better than sex tonight? I say yes. Tonight, that, that win was better than sex. <laughs> come on, you guys. Come on, you guys. Come on, you guys. You know I'm, I'm, I'm speaking the truth here. It feels pretty damn good. I'll, I'll just say that. It feels pretty damn good. Um, so I'll leave it at that because I do have to head out myself, but. I haven't felt I haven't felt this good after Nubiaco's performance in a long a long time. Um, I haven't felt this happy about it. I'll say because I feel like I don't know. I, I just it just feels like we've had so much disappointment with so much hope leading up to that disappointment that it was just really nice. At least for me, I didn't you know I wasn't expecting it. I I figured that this was going to be a wash. I wasn't expecting so for it to happen i'm like both surprised and just just exuberant it's it's an incredible feeling ha not something i've had for a very long time so i'm ecstatic i'm super happy about it i'm proud of the boys it, there's something really being built here we're playing well i just hope it continues because uh, can you imagine uh, can you imagine if we pull a result now in england as well if that if we can get a result in england too all of a sudden <laughs> it's it's a different we're, we're 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 back in this thing in the group i'll leave you guys with that i'm ecstatic i'm gonna have before to you leave home. before you leave i think this is important because i was at the david moyes conference and basically he explained that he left all those stars out because that's what he's been doing for two years and he has been doing it with inferior inferior opponents he's been leaving his stars out to get to combine the premier league so there's a good chance we could see a couple of them on the bench in london Tall order beating them in London. Nothing like Boleyn ground where, you know, that was a church for them. Still, they, they managed to adjust, but there is a good chance we're going to see a couple of them on the bench. Wouldn't surprise me. And even it's a tall order, of course, there too. But the the whole, the, the psychological part of this is so important. And you saw how well we, we can play, how we can move the ball when when the pieces are the pieces are moving and everybody's doing what they're supposed to. So... I like our odds better now than I did before this game, at least. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. I'm excited, and I'm going to have the best drive home. All right, drive safe. Good to Take see you. Take care, Godfather. <laughs> so on the uh, is it better than sex question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, somebody's yeah. playing. And yeah. I'm going to ask you, Martial, as well. Don't, don't, don't you think <laughs> I'm going to forget about you? You're all silent and quiet and serious. I'm not going to forget about you. What would be really sexy is if everybody that's listening now could press the like button. Paul Kaladaxi, Pevo, Pevo. There are close to 50 of you in here right now, and there are 30 likes. So if you haven't hit the like button, just hit, just takes you a fucking second, for God's sake. And it really helps us. And uh, it's great to see so many of the loyal followers and listeners in there on a great night like tonight um some of you are asking to to come on and chat so since it is one of those nights as well we are going to drop the link in the chat so if you want to come on hit the link come join us subscribe if you haven't done so already uh, normally about 80 percent of the people that come in on every live show aren't subscribed and don't hit the subscribe button so again if you haven't done that already hit the subscribe button hit the bell and i'll shut up um now Costa, do you know what? I'm I'm gonna say I haven't felt a feeling like tonight in a very long time when it comes to Olympiagos Football Club. That's that's all I can say tonight in relation to that question. Yeah, I'm I'm a married man. Healthy sex life finished. See, I answered your question. I ain't gonna say any more. All right. So get rid of your pussy over there, the cat. Get get rid of her. You're on mute now. Don't call anyway. him. Don't call him a pussy. Man. It is a, cool, pussy. Yeah, it's a pussy cat. Get rid of the pussy cat. 
God, again. <laughs> um, mate, I, I jumped. I jumped off the sofa on the first goal. I screamed. You know, my son was in bed upstairs. My wife's like, "What the hell are you doing? Calm down." I was like, "No." <laughs> that that for me, I had that sense of joy tonight. The team gave me that, and I am. I'm honestly, I'm having a hard time remembering when was the last time that I was so happy for an Olympiacos victory. I'm I'm struggling. I really am struggling. Maybe like the Antwerp game, the last minute winner. Or Fener, like back then. Yeah. But that was more relief. Like Antwerp and Fener, those games that we won were relief. Today was just joy. Like the, the first goal, opening the scoring like that with a banger from Fortunis. I loved it. So yeah, mate, that's all I can say answering your question. I have to answer the question myself too. I would say <laughs> no, just, no, it, it, the, the, this, this, this guy here, sorry, Marshall. <laughs> the GS um, says, my wife is watching with me and I said it was better. Pray for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Marshall, go. I would say no, it's not, not better than sex because it was a... Con the 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 way we play is, is she next uh, to you no uh <laughs> no but the, the one that was better than sex was probably arsenal because the way yeah, with be. yeah with the, the El Arabi goal yeah. because the way you you go from uh, being desperate to being the happiest man ever it's uh within seconds but tonight it was like not control win but the way we play, we were in control for most of the time, and that makes me happy. But not, uh, not, not the. I didn't have that. Uh, I don't want to say that. That, that, that madness. But I also went. I also scream on the first goal. So it was a long time since I screamed for Olympiakos goal too. Yeah. I think I think a better question for Martial here is uh, what felt better beating uh, um, OM beating Ike or Olympiacos beating West Ham. That's easy. Ah. That's easy, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. Really? Think that's easy. No, I would say Olympiacos. I would say Olympiacos Why? because because uh, a win in Europe for Olympiacos at the moment means more because OM even with the difficulty in Europe has more recent results i would say but yeah it was a strange game too i was watching both at the same time and it's it's the kind of team i would like olympiacos to face because i do believe we have a chance a chance if we have to play a uh, knockout game home and away i mean mm. yeah i see you didn't answer your question what me? Yeah, you I did. I did. I did. No, no. Tonight felt better than sex. That was every <laughs> time. Every time I see Olympiacos beating a Premier League team, to me that is just ecstatic. That is just absolutely ecstatic. And it was fair and square. It was beautiful football by Olympiacos. And also a really, I'm really glad for Porozo, you guys. I'm really glad to see that. You know what? Maybe we. Labro said last week, and I and I agreed with him, and I still agree with him that. Our center backs are going to be a bane, a bane until January, but it seems like maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. Play him against Offi. Play him against Pauk. Play him in London. Let's see how that goes. Let I, let I, him learn each other. I think the formation played a significant role tonight, um, but I do have to say that, like, at the beginning of the game, I commented to you guys like when you know when the camera goes across all the players and the anthems playing in the background, and I saw Perosa and he was kind of you know doing this like scratching himself and his body language was like super weird and I was like fuck this guy looks really nervous. You need those first couple of minutes of the game to kind of find your feet and like you know get into the game, and you know the team was in a good good way like they were all super concentrated, um, determined, focused. For 90 minutes, we have to say, okay, we, we, we copped us another sloppy goal, but 
overall, like the concentration levels today were fantastic. I would say like on both ends of the field um, and Perozo as an individual, I thought he stood out with his physical attributes. Yeah. We didn't really see him have to chase back and make a last ditch tackle. Um, he, I think, you know, it was obvious that the striker on the other team, whether it was Ings or whether it was Antonio, when he came on, they felt his presence. He's a very physical player and he did well in the air. He cleared balls that were coming in over the top. So in that sense, actually, I thought he he complimented Retos quite well as, as well. Um, when one defender was stepping up, another one was sitting back and they, they switched those roles. So I agree with everything that's been said so far. I think every one of us has said we'd like to see him again. Yeah. And um, it, it, it might be different if we play a 4-2-3-1 because we tend to get more exposed when uh, when uh, uh, the opposition is counterattacking like when we've um, you know when 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 the team's stolen the ball and we're exposed so be that as it may i i agree like i want to see i want to see more from him and i think he he grabbed the opportunity by the balls today yeah and i just want to say something that you you say we ate a, a stupid goal and the, the, the way Kitty played is stupid, but the goal itself is it's not a gift exactly because the finish of Paqueta is like something you don't see anytime, like proper volley with no yeah. no touch. Uh I I I immediately saw it was him that scored that goal because I I know it has massive quality and it's it's a gift against West Ham because it's what you get when you play English team because they have high quality players. They paid good money to take out of another league. Like Paqueta came from the French league. And that was my fear when we, when you get an English team in Europe, Azer is Brighton, West Ham. You always have that players uh, that was bought for 30 million and he can win the game on himself. Uh, but on the, on, uh, on the rest, I agree with you. And, I really, really hope the we find the system that we will see during four or five games, maybe, just to see if it can be useful. Uh, and, and maybe Hendoy can go back to midfield in that. I'm not sure Martinez thinks he can go back to midfield, but you need midfighters in a 4 3 3. We don't have that much. We didn't have another one today, did we? That jo Joao Cavalier was the only option on the bench. Yeah. But, Hagibu would have been nice in that system. Yeah. Yeah, I think some, somebody mentioned it, Labra, before about the 4-3-3, yeah. three, three, like the one we played in Fener. Do you, and I, I asked myself during the game, like, who cares about wingers when you have a, a system like that that use the creativity of Podense and Fortunis? And it's, it's not about wingers. The, the issue before wasn't really about wingers was more about correct creativity and how to have the balance between creativity and pro protecting the, the defenders and defenders have been exposed for Olympiacos during months now, I would say until Martin started to decline, we had that center back issues, I would say. So when you see Fortunist like that tonight, you have to start from Fortunist and then you, you decide to protect the, the defenders and the equation solve it it solved like really quickly i i think you're uh, is, uh, no, go ahead costa you, i think you nailed it actually and it was a point that i that i had on my mind as well what you said about you you unlock fortunis's creativity today when you play those three players in the midfield you give him the space to operate in you know where he wants and where he can best perform and we saw that tonight, the freedom that he had to move around the pitch because he had that extra cover. Uh, and, you know, I think the way you put it is 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 perfect. Costa? Uh, no, I was just going to say, if you, uh, for anyone who followed my live commentary, I was constantly feeling nervous about the fact that Costa's Fortunes at some point would come off because he cannot really play 90 minutes. But he played tonight. I was very nervous 
that he would come off and that would be when West Ham would equalize or maybe turn this around because there'd be zero creativity. And I feel like that is something Diego Martinez still needs to address, either by bringing in Pepiel or making sure that Daniel Podence is still in there. Or I'm going to dare say this, Costas is probably going to want my, uh, probably going to want my neck on this one. Maybe that's where Gustavo Scarpa's use is. You know, Fortunis cannot play those 90 minutes in this game. Bring Scarpa in that number 10 role and let him Brazil the whole thing. But I feel like Pepiel would be a great uh, addition. In, uh, would, his use would be just there. When Fortunis cannot play, throw in Pepiel at number 10. My it, it's, it's the first time we've seen that formation. So, you know, I th- there was a comment just now from Southpaw about, you know, the three-man midfield last last season with, with Samaseku and it being important to use that formation in... The, the big games, the ones that are more more challenging. Um, I don't like, okay, I'm not going to really comment much about Scarpa. <laughs> contradict that statement right now. I've seen more uh, skateboarding videos of Scarpa than I have seen uh, Scarpa on the pitch so far. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, so, well, we have somebody waiting from the audience that like to come on. He... <laughs> He's put his uh, let's name. Let's see. It's, I think it's very interesting. I think it's, we might go viral tonight. Let's see. Costa with a K 2.0 is joining us. Hello, guys. Hello there. How you doing? All right, Costa. Guys, if I tell you the whole, like my entire day, like how how it, it unfolded, you won't believe me. I You're woke up at six now. in the morning. I woke up at six in the morning because I had class at eight. I go to college uh, at CCNY in New York. Um, so I woke up at 6. I got ready. I went to class, finished finish with the class. Then I had a gap for an hour, and then I had a history class. As soon as I finished from the history class, I met up with this, with this one girl from my chemistry class, which is half Mexican, half, uh, half Ecuadorian. And we went to the library to study for uh, an upcoming exam that we had today. Uh, keep in mind, she's like half. A are you, you going to talk about? Are you going to? Are you? Are you going to talk about a sex story now? Are you going to talk about football? No, 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 no. No. Costa, but behave. Not, not with the case. I was the one Jesus, Christ. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Forced, Let him I talk. Forced, I was forced to watch the game with her, right? Because we were studying for the test. She needed help, and I, I kept telling her, if fucking Poroso plays well today. Uh, we're gonna go on a date next week. When Fortunis scored that goal, I screamed without the S. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. Is it a good thing you're going out on a date with this woman? Yeah, she's actually pretty cute. Okay. Well, what if Poroso was crap today? Would you still ask? Man, me I, I would leave. I wouldn't even take the the test. I told her, like, she was asking me, aren't you, aren't you going to study for the test? I told her, the test is probably going to make me depressed. The team right now is making me happy. So put it on a scale. Olympiaco is winning no matter what. <laughs> the test wasn't, was, it didn't go that bad. It was a chemistry test, but it is what it is. I'm happy with the team today. I'm, um, I think after Sunday's match, we were all kind of, well, not disappointed with the team, but disappointed with how the fans reacted to the goal that we that we scored. And we felt like today that, like, you know, negative energy, could, like, you know, mess up with the team's mentality going into the match. But <laughs> true. And I was somewhat skeptical, but I kept telling my myself and my friends throughout, like, this group stage uh, thing for, like, the past one and a half months. Uh, that we we're gonna beat West Ham at Skaki because we haven't won against a big team in like a long time. I, what was it? when was the last time we won such a big match with a team? Like name wise. Name yeah, wise, it depends, you, it depends what you classify as a big team. Like yeah, Arsenal. Arsenal is a big team, I, I think but... Arsenal, Arsenal at Emirates. I think Arsenal at the Emirates. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. The second the the. Uh, second win under Martins, so third. I total. think the last big home win was against uh, PSV. Eindhoven, 4-2. That was a eh. good win. 
The thing that was a downer about that game is that it was behind closed doors, if I remember yes. well. That was COVID season. So it wasn't as exciting or, you know, yeah. Anyway. Yes, I agree. Um, so the team desperately needed that win, man. Like, especially uh, going forward, I feel like this is, well, it's kind of early because we haven't, we haven't played all six games, but I think this is by like this is definitely Martinez's Milan game. If you get if you like if you get what I mean, yeah, this is definitely like a win that's gonna guarantee him. I think next season, like minimum. I don't think we're gonna sack him or you know something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano's dress. That's an extra. I'll let you know next week. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh, please okay. don't. Please don't. Please don't. Yeah, next please week. don't. Please don't. <laughs> Costa, this is all your fault, man. This is all your it's fault. not my fault. We can talk about these things. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Somebody, I think somebody called me Pierce Morgan. If they did that, then. Oh, God. Pierce oh, God. Morgan. Jesus Christ. All right, Costa. Um, Costa 2.0. Now that we've won this game, what do you think we can do in this group? What do you think? Did, do you think tonight's a game changer in terms of uh, where where do we go from here? Do you think we can win this group, finish second, or still third place? Realistic. I think the team is gonna get a lot of faith from this game. Uh, I think we can we can definitely grab a point uh, in London if we win. Well, that, that's that's also great. Um, but I I feel like we're gonna beat Freiburg in Germany. That because could happen. I, I believe that more than London. Because we have also now won a big away game in a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like today, uh, like, guaranteed th the third spot. I like. I, I'm. I'm definitely sure that we're gonna get third place, minimum. Like, I don't see Batska winning any more points. What do y'all think? No, no, I agree. I agree with that. Because we when when when's the the, the game against Serbian team? Fifth game, sixth game? It's a, it's the last one. That's the last one. That's the last okay. one. Uh, big game. Big game. Yeah, yeah. So they'll probably lose to Freiburg away. And then uh they play at home to West Ham before they play us. Yeah. The, the thing is, I think Freiburg, uh Olibiakos, West Ham, we're all fighting for points now. Yeah, that's like, that, that's also a like a thing to keep in mind exactly. because, because West Ham, you don't know how West Ham is going to react to that loss because they got the Prem. They're, they're doing okay in the Prem. They're not doing that bad, but it plays a, plays a big role for these, for these teams like Brighton, West Ham teams that are fighting for a, a six, seven European spot. Nothing's over till it's over. Uh, we got a nice donation from uh, Ira Kaur. Says Don Beckrins, then Don Echisilavia, Coma Interpol. Okay. Thank you very much for the donation. No, no, no. That's a so, that's so basically, what he's saying is Beckrins. Beckrins hasn't been arrested by Interpol yet because he nearly finished for Tunis. Is he talking career. about Pedro Walker? Pedro Walker. <laughs> Man, he was, he was definitely on that booze. I'm telling you that. He was definitely, like, sometimes I can see it in his eye. No comment. Uh, yeah, okay. The, I, know I, I, I do. I do love the man. I, I appreciate him. I'm not a. I'm not a hater. I. I appreciate. I usually appreciate what people do for the club, and he definitely did a lot of good things. He did. Masha, what do you got? No, I was going to say I'm heading to bed because I have to wake Take up early, early for the for the work tomorrow. Man I'm of the match, quickly. Tell us your many costas for me on that podcast. <laughs> Give us your man of the match quickly before you go. Yeah, well, it has to be Fortunis because I've been a lot, I've been critic, critic about Fortunis. So I have to admit it was, he delivered what I was asking. So thanks. Marshall, thanks very much, my friend. Coach is great. Coach is great before he leaves. Coach is oh, great. Uh, no. Yeah, I would say B, maybe. Ah, Marcial, Ella. No, a, 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 he has to have a, to have an A, but sometimes it's it's changes. Uh, Scarpa at the end was like, okay, he had to 
throw Scarpa, but he, he will he will make the five subs anyway. So yeah. Before I let you go, I have to say that on our website gate7intl.com there's a really good article that Marshall wrote about Fortunis and whether he is the leader of this team if you haven't read that already I do recommend you head over to our website you can read it uh, if there are French listeners as well he wrote it in French it's been translated into English of course so you can read that at gate7intl.com Marshall bonne nuit good night bye see good you soon pal. ciao man Costa, we stay on a little bit more. Would you want? Dude, you want to go? I can stay up all night, man. I am so happy. This, this has, uh, this brings me back to 2011 when we beat Borussia Dortmund at Karaiskaik after losing to Marseille and Arsenal, and it really felt like we really need to win this, and we did. Jurgen Klopp's Dortmund, Robert Lewandowski's Dortmund, Mar- Royce's Dortmund. Uh, I don't want to sound negative, but. I really feel like that Batska game is going to do us. Just like that Marseille game, it kind of skyky did us. In Back what way? Then. First place, second place, or what? Second place. Like, I remember somebody once asked me, what is your biggest, what, what, what was your, your darkest moment as an Olympiacos fan? And my answer is very simple. Uh, Dortmund versus Marseille, 2011. We beat Arsenal 3-1 at Kareskaiki. All we needed was Dortmund not to lose against Marseille. Dortmund were 2-0 up. Yeah, well, and they lost 3-2. Us. There you go. Bravo, Recosta. Bravo, Recostara. Bravo, Recostara. That was my darkest moment. But this is what I... I'm getting... I'm, th- that's what I'm getting. you. <laughs> I'm getting those vibes now after that West Ham win. That I feel like once this group is done, we're going to look back at that Batska Topola game in Serbia. Nothing... Nothing is worse for me than the Liverpool game at Anfield being 1-0 mm-hmm. up at half-time, Rivaldo free kick, them needing to score three goals and then them scoring three goals and going above us. Uh, no, equaling us on 10 points. and They were to... above us though. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on goal difference. We had 10 points and they still they still uh, went up and then they went went on to win it, of course. And then there's the United game. But, um, yeah, no, the, the thing is, like, the Marseille Dortmund game, you're not in control of those games. You could, like, you had a role to play and you screwed it anyway. Uh, I, 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 I couldn't sleep game. for two days. Metalist for me yeah. is like the modern Juventus. Yeah. The, That's why the Metalist was worse than Juventus, <sighs> man. Because, uh, as Costa, Costa with the C said, man, uh. We were in full control of that game. Like no other, no no other team could like mess mess the game for us. It was all us. We could have been up three at halftime. Yeah. And then uh, for me, I think Valverde, like the the way the way Valverde played back then, is similar to how Almeida plays right now with like this constant high press. The players were dead, man. They yeah. gave it all. We were dead. <laughs> That, that was the thing with Valverde's team. And, uh, you know, we knew it as Olympiacos fans that, you know, for 65, 70 minutes, it's going to be fantastic on the eyes. Yeah. And then the last 20 minutes is going to be pain. Yeah. Just us on the back foot and hoping for the best. I feel but like it- that year we should have signed some extra midfielders because I remember Orbaif, Makun, mm-hmm. Magnatis, and sometimes Modesto. Macun and Orbaev, I think, are, are a very underrated duo. I'm not, I'm not kidding. They were, they were an okay mm. duo. But I if feel we... like we should have signed someone better because uh, do you remember Kazim Richards? Like, who the hell is that guy, man? The man tw- has 25 mm. loanies. 20, he has been loaned 25 times. Yeah, do you yeah. remember him? Half Turkish, half uh, Dutch. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kazi, Colin Kazim Richards. Yeah, yep. I remember him. Kazim, yeah. Kazim. I don't know. Uh, his his Colin shirt, Kazim his shirt Richards, is, yeah. was Kazim, Kazim. Yeah, he yeah, did yeah. that. And then anyway. with the United game, I remember I, I used to live in the Czech Republic for five years, and for some reason I didn't I didn't watch the first match because I couldn't find uh uh what's it called the cable channel that you know was broadcasting it, so I had to watch the live stream of Gavros.gr. <laughs> 
I couldn't even hear the the commentator scream goal because his mic was shit. <laughs> and then I remember David De Gea beco- like becoming Superman against the Fuster uh, and the Dominguez. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was I was also gassed about the fact that we didn't sign a, a like a proper striker in January that year. We lo- we lost Mitroglu and we signed Valdez. My, my grandma, who's six feet under right now, is is faster than Valdez. Remember Valdez? I remember Nelson Valdez. It was it, it, that that Mitroglu deal was bad for everyone involved. Yeah. Mitroglu, Olympiacos, and Fulham. Mitroglu because he was injured, and then he went to Fulham, and everybody to this day call him a flop in London while he was having the biggest, the greatest form of his life. Uh, and I'm telling you, if we hadn't sent that also hurt Greece. If we hadn't sent Mitroglou on loan on, in January and let him recover, come back to Olympiacos and score all those goals, we would have we would have dropped Costa Rica. We would have made it to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. It was bad for Fulham because they went under. Uh, it was bad for Olympiacos because they just didn't have a striker after Mitroglou. It was just poor business. I mean, yeah, they, Olympiacos made 15 mil, but it was still poor business. Anyway, even even Olaitan could have could have done the job for us. I feel like who in the, Olaitan because he got injured in the Panathinaikos game and he was worse than the injured. Leg. Yeah, worse than uh, injured. Yeah, definitely yeah. worse than injury. Uh, yeah. yeah, unlucky man. That was just um, that was just before that game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like a week. It was before. after United the first. It was after United. It was after the first leg. Gone. Yeah, after the yeah, first and leg. then and then we lost three 0 to Panathinaikos and it was. We 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 conceded. I think all those goals after Olaitan uh, was uh, yeah, yeah. Was, had to be taken off. After yeah, the yeah. win against United, we played Panathinaikos, la, uh, lost three zero. Then we went yeah. to Tuba, lost two one, and then we had United again in Manchester. Yeah. It was yeah. it was a very bad streak of games, man. Like with, with like all the issues we we had, like all the the negativity because of Olaitan's health issues, it definitely destroyed mm. us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to start wrapping things up. Uh, try and end it on a positive note as well. But Costa, thanks for calling in. Good luck with your. Uh, Thank with you, your Costa. Test. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. By the way, my uh, you, you, I'm I'm clapazas on YouTube. You probably know me. Like two and a half. <laughs> hey, de clapazza, hey, de clapazza. Excellent. Me mas dosis. Nah. Thank you for nah, coming nah, nah, nah. on. Unless we get unless we get Ramon back and then I have to I have to make a report. <laughs> well, well, we can only hope. We can only hope. We just want to see Labros' reaction. That's all. <laughs> That's the only reason we want Ramon back. I think Thank Ramon ended up a, a, a Espanol, by the way. St- uh, I mean, they're second division now. But still, <laughs> Ibora was playing second division. Yeah, Dax. Anyway, stay anyway, tuned for that Labros. For that Labros Sirmos deep dive. Costa, Glapazza, Taleme. See you next time. Taleme, Glapazza. Ciao. Super. Uh, I'm going to ask you, it's early days, but do you think we're going to make it to the next round of the Europa League? I don't care. That's an unpopular... Alifia, I I don't care. Um, there, There is a part of me that feels like Let's let's look at the table. Hang on. So West we're, we're third. Two, two, get two points, points behind. Yeah, Freiburg so six, as well. It's six six four, is it? Yes. And Batska have one. Six six four one. I um, honestly, the way I see it, we can finish first. We can finish third in this group. Um, if we can finish top, great. Second place is so shit, man. Because I don't think this team is really ready to play a Champions League team. Like we we will go and end up playing a Champions League team in February and mm. probably get knocked out. And I think we can legit do something in the Conference League. I'm not saying I want us to play Conference League, but you see what I mean. Like I'm I'm approaching it on a day by day, game by game basis, based on what I see. We will end up where we deserve, is what I think. I do I do legitimately believe that we have a chance to win this group, to go to London, win the game, go to Germany, win, and win at home. I believe it. 
I believe we can do it. I also believe that we can lose all three games, but I don't think we will. But you see what I mean? Like anything can happen. I'm I'm happy to see the progress that's being made. I'm happy to see like you know players like Perozo have a good game today. The manager show flexibility. I'm happy for Alexandropoulos, who we haven't talked a lot about today. Who, if you look statistically, I think is the player that had the most shots on goal from our team today. I think at least mm. four shots, maybe five shots. Mm. The score could have been much. But it flatters West Ham two one. It flatters them. It makes it look like a close game when it wasn't. But there's a flip side to that, and I'm going to say this as well. West Ham's lineup today was tragic. The, like the, I was shocked. I was surprised. Like their their selection, Moyes' selection today. Talk to any West Ham fan. I've I've actually spent a little bit of time after today's game looking at some of their reactions, some of the guys that we talked to over the last few days. Pathetic is a word I've heard a lot. Um, I mean, it, I was surprised to see Danny Ings up front. Like he can't play that role on his own. Um, I was surprised not to see Jar- Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen for them is my, is their best player. He is, yeah. West Ham's best player for me, and mm. you know. It, and he was terrible when he came in. He was so, it was it was like he was still on the bench when he came on. Like, I I thought that at least one of Paqueta or Bowen would start the game. Uh, even Edson Alvarez didn't start the game. He did not start the game. Mikel uh, Antonio I, didn't start. Agued didn't start the game at the back. Aguer and Zuma, the the centre back duo, didn't start. Yes, uh, Ogbona was the captain because Zuma was on the bench. So. Yeah, guys, it was it was a relatively like weaker squad, but but that it doesn't take away anything. There's still a lot of like classy players on that team. It's a Premier League team that's in the top half of the Premier League division, so it's not to be taken lightly. But you know, like everybody had to perform tonight from our team, and I'm happy with everything that I saw. Uh, like the effort the the passion and and yeah the it's hard not to get a reaction from the players when you see a, an atmosphere like that as well when they walk in like you've got to be up for it and and my gosh you know they were and we're all happy for it after the game so just just bear some of those things in mind for the next game in london we don't know how how moise is going to line up he might you know those players i mentioned paqueta bowen you know the the regular starting eleven players they might start in London, so it might be a different proposition. Let's see. Take every game as it comes. Don't start getting your calculators out. My recommendation: like follow it. Don't follow it. Don't start getting your calculators out. Where are we going to finish first, second, or third? What results do we need? What do the others need to do? That's um, never. It, it never gives you any satisfaction. Am I right, Costa? Absolutely right. Like, uh, let's not get too. It's always good not to get to, not to go too high, not to go too low. You know, not to go too high after a big win, not to go too low after a defeat. This is a historic victory against a very strong team. We keep on dreaming. That's the uh, that's the uh, that's the motto. We're gonna keep doing that. But you know what? We're gonna keep you know keeping it uh, keeping it on the down low, keeping the bar as we do here at Gate 7 International, giving you the best information for all of you. But you know what, guys? Something special is brewing up at Olympiacos, and we can start forgetting about last season. We can start forgetting about last season. Every week that goes by helps us forget about what happened, what we saw uh, last season. Uh, you're on mute. I said, I said, amen. I like that very much. Uh, we can start forgetting about last season. Let's bring on one last guest and wrap this one up. One last guest. We've got jo- Yorgos. Yorgos. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Can hear you. Is yes, that sir, yeah, I'm yeah, you? Yeah, I'm from London, guys, but <clears throat> I've lost my camera during the celebrations. I, I actually might have broken it. So I've been on the show a couple of times. I'm on the blog team as well. But I know who yeah. you are. What's what, up, what, what a, You're not from East London, are you? No, 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 North, North. No, oh, okay, North London. No way from East London, but 
Yeah, well, you've got, a, you've got a good friend there. Uh, you've got a good friend here, then, if you're from North London. I don't think he's a Tottenham fan, though. No, I'm a, I'm a Liverpool fan. I'm not a Tottenham oh, fan. Oh, yeah, Dex. Nice. Dex, at, least uh, support, at least you support a red team. Exactly, <laughs> that's exactly why I started supporting them when I was young. But it was either Man United, Arsenal, or them, but I don't know, I just went for Liverpool. But anyways, that's not what we're like. we got nothing to do with today's game. It's just... I don't know about you guys, um, but I don't remember the last time we've seen Olympiacos play. And I, I can't remember the last European game that we won and it felt this good. A complete think, game. A, a complete game, exactly. Because I think yeah. it was you, um, Costa, that you mentioned that, you know... I think Which one? Costa with a C, <laughs> with a C. Um, <laughs> I think it was you that mentioned that, you know, we, we've obviously won with Fener and we um, we won, obviously, the game in the beginning of the season with Antwerp. That felt like a good game. But at the same time, as you said, it was desperation. At the, it was at the end. It yeah. didn't feel like anything. This was like the first game in so long that we've seen like a, a complete performance from, you know, the first minute. And, and you know... So be it. It wasn't a, a like a strong West Ham side. They have a better team than that. You know, we were playing at home, but it was so important to get that win as well today. Coming back mm-hmm. from that Sunday game as well, it was it was crazy. I, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. And it was the first time where I was watching a game of us playing in Europe and I wasn't terrified. You know, I was seeing it. I had hope. I, I, we were going forwards and I'm like, we might actually create something. You know, everyone today, everyone played amazing and just what a night, what a night. Like you said, it was a, it, it did feel like that. I think the answer to your question is uh, Arsenal 2020 at the Emirates when uh, we eliminated them. I think that was that's our complete probably, game. That's probably the last, yeah, the last time. What do you think, Jorho? You think we're going to make it through to the next round of the Europa League? You know what? Um... I've said, I said this from the beginning um, when we first saw our group. For me, as long as we don't come second, because I always hate those games that, you know, we play with the Champions League drop down. I just, I can't stand that. I, I hate those games. I'd rather either go first or go third, because honestly, I think this season, the, the focus should obviously be on the league, 100%. We need to, you know, focus on the league more, but obviously... We can't just not care about Europe, you know. Mm. We need to do well in Europe. But honestly, as as Costa with a C said, we've you know the next three games we can either go and win all three of them, or you know there is a chance we might drop, you know, lose two and then draw again with the um, Serbian side. But as long as we don't come second, in my opinion. But honestly, I don't mind. I don't mind as as long as we just keep getting better, developing. Yeah. January is going to be very important. Hopefully, we can bring a number eight and a centre back. Very important. Um, but I think, yeah, honestly, I don't mind. I don't mind. But I wouldn't like second place because I just Atalanta. Like the last time we we went through that, I just it's something about those teams dropping from the Champions League that you know it just makes you feel a bit uncomfortable. But we weren't good that we. We weren't great that season either. No, no, no. Of course, we were. We poor. weren't. Great. I remember the. I remember the groups. Uh, the group stages as well. They were painful. Apart from Fener, which they were bad that yeah. season as well. Yeah, but, they were terrible. Yeah, they were terrible. Exactly. To be fair, but, but it, it, it's a very mature um, way of looking at things. Uh, what I'm. What I mean is, we didn't just become an Ibero mother tonight because we beat West Ham 2-1 oh, yeah, of course. it's it's a step it's another step and I said it earlier maybe people are getting bored of me saying it this is a team in transition a team that's being built brick by brick minimum two-year project and that doesn't change it doesn't change football teams don't just click together like that because you bought in 15 players. Yeah. So, you know, th- th- but there is still a part of a fan base that thinks, you know, oh, yeah, you must have already. Wow. It's like, 
but we clicked, didn't we? Tonight we clicked. We found a possible center back pairing that doesn't suck, and we and, and that those three in midfield as well. It, it worked. It worked because they were focused. There was focus from everyone on the pitch, like the sharpness of the passing, the um, just the fluidity of the team, the mobility of the players moving around the pitch like every nobody was standing still no one was standing mm. still and there was urgency like when they were get when when west ham were getting the ball we were either like you know seeing players run back into position like super fast to just like get the shape back and everything worked because everyone was into it everyone was focused and like a hundred percent into the game it is mm. We we didn't we haven't seen that all season. Maybe we did a bit against Freiburg, but but for those shitty mistakes, lapses of concentration. Yeah. That that's what we reduced today. The lapses in concentration. We increased the focus, and that's a big difference maker today. And then it's I mean it's an individual, it's an individual goal, an individual moment of brilliance. How many how many times in your life have you seen a player? toe poke the ball from outside the box and send it into the bottom corner i can't remember many like who toe pokes the ball from outside the box even yeah, ronaldo like, yeah. like the ronaldo the ronaldo he'd do a toe poke or two like inside the penalty box but that was something else mate like the way he hit the ball yeah, yeah you're right he did comment it after the game like to the to the cosmo Dare report he's yeah. like mate i toe poked it that's the only thing i could do it was a great goal, you know, with a bit of luck. There was it hit, I think it hit Mavropanos' legs a bit and it changed direction ever so slightly and it took it right into the corner. And then the second goal was luck, mate, but we deserved the, it. Yeah, but the universe owed us that piece yeah. of luck. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because we had conceded all those ridiculous goals ourselves. It, 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 it felt, somebody said it earlier, I can't remember who it was, it felt like Milan. It felt like Guillermo's yeah. goal. Zapata. Zapata. Yeah. Yeah. Guillermo yeah. Zapata. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, have a question. I have a question. Yes. Um, it's, it's regarding to do with the loans because, you know, obviously Greek media, it's very hard to find out what happened. Um, what's the loan situation with Alexandropoulos? Because he's playing, oh, he's playing in, is, is there an option or is there an obligation? That one seems like one of the more clear cut deals that we made this summer in terms of like the the public information that's available it looks like a 4 million euro option and who but, has the but, who has the same but, but but the thing is that yeah. sporting lisbon really rate alexandropoulos and the whole purpose of loaning him back to olympiaco loaning him to olympiacos or back to him to olympiacos uh was so that he could get some minutes get experience and it's a match fitness so sporting really believe in him so if alexandropoulos keeps it up becomes a starter in a 4-3-3 formation does well it's going to be hard to um to get him away but from then what the option then it's like costas uh, told us just now like uh he is right but the thing is like options are players, tricky the player needs to a player's opinion matters if olibiakos say hey sporting here's four million as written in our contract uh but sporting also need to accept it so it's going to be tricky it's going to be tricky but i think it's best if we just concentrate on this season not think too much about the next because there are a few other low knees as well in this squad like Poroz if porozo shoots for the stars he's a low knee from trua uh who else we got we got daniel podense on the wing we got sol biking on the wing so I think it's best to just concentrate on the season, see how well we can do it, at least until Christmas, and then that's something for later. No, no, yeah. that's exact. No, I completely agree with you, but I was just wondering about it because he's he was incredible today, man. Wow, and I mean, I don't know if you guys remember yeah. when he was down the wing, when he when he went down the wing and he just dribbled like past four players and he almost scored. That yeah. he was it was incredible. I think yeah, him and um, uh, Madi as eight. Kind of, they weren't mm -hmm. exactly proper eight, but having Eze as the six and then having given both of them more freedom to move up and down, they were they were incredible today. And I'm so yeah. so happy we finally played the four three three. Like I don't know what hit him, but 
I'm glad Martinez finally picked the 4 3 3. That was a very happy game. But so we, glad. We talked about that a little bit earlier, like the fear factor of having Perozo starting for the first time, the inexperience as well, and needing to shore up the defense. I think I think that played a role. Um, Costa, I don't know if anybody asked uh, that question in the press conference today. I know you didn't have a chance to ask a question. We but... did talk about Poroso. Basically, uh, Martinez, uh, Marti Diego Martinez brought him up. He said that uh, he's been re working really hard at Redis, really hard. Uh, but he pointed out the fact that he chooses his lineup based on what works against each opponent. Yeah. Uh, so, like, he didn't... He didn't clarify whether or not this is the center back pairing, but he is very pleased with him. He worked really hard, and uh, he does rate him highly. He does rate him highly. He's very pleased with him, and he does rate him highly. He said that he grabbed the opportunity too, like he grabbed it. Of course, yeah, he, he, of course he, that was he our did. best uh, center back pairing for the whole season, a hundred percent. Yep, so far he, yeah, was, he was he was incredible in the air as well. That's why I was yeah. very impressed by it. He didn't make a single mistake when it came to balls like. That were coming up high. He was very good. I was so. It and was he was a, injured. Yeah, it, and, and that, that hurt too. He had the knock, and he was he kept playing through it because he kept going down a lot, a lot of the time, especially through um, you know later on the game. He doesn't take risks with his passing either. Like he won't try and cut through the lanes. Uh, but you know, Heze did a really good job of that today, like playing balls forward. I think. If you look at his passes, I think maybe 80% of his passes were progressive passes today, like forward, getting the ball into into forward spaces. And that's really important. Retos normally does that really well. I thought he he was a little bit more conservative than other games. And, you know, that's 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 good um, in a game like today. But, yeah, like I think we, we said it earlier, Jorgo, we want to see this partnership Again, um, for me, he, he really grabbed the, the, the opportunity mm. by the horns, and he deserves he deserves mm. to to play to play more. And I'd like to see that part. I think the most the best thing about him today was, you know, when the ball went towards him. I don't know why, but I just felt the safest out of all the centre backs this season. I mean, with Doy, um, I think someone mentioned it earlier on. He, if it was Doy, if Doy was in his position. He probably would have overcommitted and yep. probably caused a foul. He, he was just, he was so good today. And I, I hope we see it against Offi and I hope we see it against Park as well. And I just hope we go forwards with this because honestly, out of the other two centre backs, I mean, Doy isn't a centre back. I don't like to put him there. And also, you know, this is his first proper break breakaway season. You know, I think we're being a bit too tough on him. But especially with Freire, you know, 29 years old, we brought him from. He was the captain of Pumas. You know, he's been disappointing, in my opinion. But I think Corozo, wow, he, he was very good today. And I think he really has a, a very like good chance to you know, impress everyone. 100% agree with you. All right, mate. Um, are, you going to, are you going to the return leg? Uh, mate, I'm still looking for tickets. I'm hoping my, my uncle was in Greece last week. He has a... Mm -hmm. um, he has his sources there trying to get a ticket and I'm waiting for the Gate 7 London Club to post okay. anything, but they haven't posted mm -hmm. anything. So hoping to get a ticket because that would be very, that would be amazing. But Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open for that. Uh, announcements from your local Gate 7s. I'm waiting for the Brussels one. So yeah, keep uh, keep your eyes open, guys, about tickets. I'm going to be making the trip over. So Jorgo, maybe I see you. Hopefully, I see hopefully, you. At the, hopefully, mate. At London, and maybe. hopefully, I'll have the blog for the post match written by tomorrow, which should be Excellent. should be very very pleasant writing for me. Fantastic pleasant experience. Get a good night's sleep. Hopefully Thanks for so. coming on, guys. Take care. Good night. Thanks, mate. Take care, dude. Thanks night. for joining us. Bye bye. Right. Right, Costa, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're almost uh, an hour and a half. Let's wrap up. So what is your, who was your man of the match and what's your coach's grade? Kostakis, man of the match. H hard not to pick Costa. Um, we had a fan, uh, we had the fans vote man of the match as well. We've got a poll running on YouTube mm -hmm. and Fordunis has 71% of the votes. Perozo has 16%. Rodine has three, 10% from Hesse. 
and some of you also are asking why isn't Camara in there but I think it's clear I think it's clear uh, Fortuna's had a massive game tonight big impact with that goal and not only joy to watch today a manager I give him uh, I think it, yeah, it's an A A minus some of the changes at the end are a bit slightly irritating but you know what can you say after a game like that and I'm you know he had the balls to to change the formation he showed the flexibility and adaptability that we'd seen when we scouted him and you know when we analyzed his um his coaching methods from previous teams so you know happy days are you going to say yeah, anything I, different? <laughs> well, for Tunis, because I think this was a career performance. This was, especially at his age, and after two very heavy injuries and still be playing like that against a top Premier League club, absolutely amazing. I give him an A. The only reason I'm not giving him an A+, plus is because I was I was uh, disappointed with the final product. Uh, I felt like Podenza should have taken, should have taken his chances. I, I wanted to see more shots. I Ubel Kabi I wasn't too pleased with, but I'm giving him an A because that that was smashing. This was a smashing victory. It's all right. Should we wrap it up, right, then? guys? Thank you for absolutely. Thank you guys for joining us. Do not forget to like and subscribe because this helps a lot. Help us spread the word. Our community is growing. Uh, where there's Olympiacos fans around the world, and we have immense goals and dreams with this podcast please help us around with this uh a big shout out to our patreons as well and uh, please feel free to sign up because we got some great exclusive content whether that's interviews or graphics or or stats please do join us great work from Aris Burlubas is the godfather of gate 7 international and uh, we thank you for all your support guys uh we hopefully we're gonna uh, I'm going to attend more Karaskaki games real soon uh, and hopefully I'm going to get to meet a few of you as well Thank you Costa as you said you can check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash gate 7 7 the number international gate 7 international Patreon go and check that out exclusive interviews there are three different tiers you can join our WhatsApp group for one dollar uh, a month uh, you get exclusive access or early access to content via the whatsapp group exclusive interviews higher tier uh, we're going to be speaking to uh panagulias a famous coach greek national team we're going to be talking to his daughter i think that's the next one we also have some interviews that we did with um Huracan's president, so that's the the club of Santiago Hesse. We talked to their former president about Argentinian football and about Hesse, of course, so you can check that out as well if you are one of our patrons. So do go and check that out as well. That's all we've got time for today. It's uh, bloody hell, it's nearly two o'clock over there, mate. Uh, thanks for staying this long. Time to go to bed for us. Wherever you are in the world, thank you very much for your support. A great night for Olympiacos tonight and hoping for many, many more uh, nights like these in the not too distant future. We play Offie on Monday. So we'll, we'll be thank back you. anyway for a show on Sunday and also Monday after the Offie game. We're Gate 7 International by the fans. For the fans, see you next time. Oh,